Okay. Y'all ready for a fucking boss fight? As will ever be, I suppose. あの巨大な扉と言い、まるで鉄剣の間ですね。まったく、テーマパークも顔負けすぎるでしょ。この声は、ついにお出ましってわけか。Oh, it's the weird CGI thing from the intro. Yeah! I was wondering when that one was gonna show up. Given the way how it looks like... The only, like, CGI element of the, uh... Like, the intro sequence and the fact that it comes near the end and it's, like... Really ominous and creepy, I honestly expected that to, like, be the final boss or something. Oh no, it's number five of eight. We're, we still have three more levels to climb on that ladder. Oh my god. Although, you know what? For once, I will give Asuka credit. She kept telling us that this thing was going to kick our ass and was way beyond our skill level. And for once, she was right. Because this boss is probably the first really serious difficulty spike in the game. Largely because it's intended to be fought with your ranged party members. So, like, right away you can see, like, okay, so we've got a couple, couple easy wins, right? So the thorn shots aren't really that hard to avoid, but then, like, you have that. So she's constantly tracking you on the floor. And she's fast. Yeah, the swords are very easy to dodge, but uh, the real killer is going to be coming up real soon here. Although, yeah, also there's that, where she can just fucking shit out like 800 damage in front of her at will. Yeah, there's a lot of, like, area denial going on here. Yeah, that right there. So... It, when she is in certain attacks, when you try to attack, she will automatically retreat away from you. So, normally, uh, our strategy would be to come in here with Shio and just fucking pound the shit out of her. But that just does not work here. You cannot stay close enough to her consistently enough to make that work. It really seems like they overtuned the shit out of this boss. Oh, just you wait. This is phase one. Phase one? Welcome to phase two, baby. Now there's two of them, and they all have the same attacks. Do they? Does attacking both of them drain the main life bar, or? No. There is the main one, and there is a fake one, which has less HP. That once you and then once you kill it, it disappears for a while. Oh, just for a while. Okay. Yeah. See, after a while, she makes it disappear, and then she starts another attack round, and then when she's done, she'll bring it back out. Yeah. I. I. <sighs> I can finally understand why Asuka's terrified of this one. Will the clone now respawn, or is it gone for the rest of the fight? Oh, it will absolutely respawn. Motherfucker. Anyway, welcome to phase three, motherfucker! Now there's three of them! How many phases are we dealing with here? 
Just three. Just three. I will say this at the very least, like, compared to, like, some of the other enemies in the game, like, it has a really nice design to it. Yeah, I could plausibly believe that this is a witch. Also, for what it's worth, if you notice that there's a bunch- you notice how there's a bunch of, uh, thorns on the wall, they will hurt you. Oh, of course they will. Like, not much, but, you know, if you happen to be not paying attention, you know, not completely aware of where you are, you will absolutely run into the wall and, you know, hurt yourself for, like, 100 damage. Okay, so you said that the game probably intends for you to fight using your ranged allies, but are you still... Are Ko and Asuka still party locked? Ko and Asuka are, yes. But like, Sora, Shio, absolutely, this is not their fight. So basically it's Yuki, Mitsuki, or Bust at this point. Because, like, yeah, I think, like, this is the first time, like, I've seen you, like, dip into the item screen and start using, like, actual healing items, at least on camera, anyway. Yeah, I can't remember that menu at all. Yeah, I, I try very hard not to use the item menu, because I think it's just more interesting to just do it without having to heal. But, yeah, no, not, not here. Absolutely not here. Oof. Anyway, let's, um, let's go back to the drawing board on that one. I appreciate how the boss has no chill and will just continue to kick the shit out of you, even after you're dead. So, uh, new strategy here. We're bringing Mitsuki. Not because Mitsuki's particularly good at fighting this boss, she absolutely is not, but she has a shield, and that's not nothing. We also have switched Ko over to Asuka's core, so that that way we have two spell users. Which, not- I mean, she's only weak to spell about half the time, but, you know, having two of them will make that substantially easier to hit. Oh, and I see she's already dead again, so... Oh, and, and so is Mitsuki! Yeah, this is, uh, we're about to enter the everything is fine part of the fight. Yeah, literally, like, one HP left to death. Man, that's gutsy. I like that Asuka couldn't be bothered to possibly even check if he was still okay. Now you see, that just means that she cares the most of all of them. Either that or she's currently knocked out too and they're more concerned about him than her. I want to hope that she's the one checking on everyone else who we came across in the Eclipse, but I'm pretty sure that's definitely not going to be the case. Yes, 
It's either that or... Oh, I was gonna say, surprise plot twist, Asuka's been kidnapped again. Huh. Maybe I should have given Asuka a little more credit. First, let me just whip, whip out the mind wipe and do a bit of double tap. So. <laughs> Oh, that's a complete win for the good guys, I guess. Oh, and Asuka's learned the power of friendship. Yeah, no, they're all weirded out because you're acting like a human being, Asuka. And she's back. Hey, now, I don't think we've seen her blush either. I think she might have blushed when, uh, the, uh, when the, the pawn shop guy was teasing her back at the mall at one point. If it, if it was, though, it's, we've only seen it, like, once or twice. I'll take your word for it. So they just totally left Shiori on the roof, right? It's fine, the librarian's there. I don't really think that helps the situation any. Although it's- every, everything is fine. As it, uh, rem remember that Zodiac had this entire place, like, locked down. So, the, uh, their people are taking care of it. Christ, like, we've been, like, making, like, Men in Black and Neuralizer jokes all the way through this LP. I like, didn't fucking expect, like, the literal Men in Black to show up at some point. <laughs> ご視聴ありがとうございました。了解しました。お嬢様。いかがしますか。アングレカも全面的に投入することも可能ですが。やめておきましょう。ゾディアックの了見全面投入は左になりかねません。その強化さんの古巣を悪く言いたくはないのですが。<笑> 
お気になさらずでは私の方だけで調査を続行しますお願いしますそれに That's right. Send in this train special horses? I don't think so. We've got a couple kids with anime swords. So I take it this would probably have been the point in like the non EX plus version where like White Shroud would be fully introduced, right? I suppose so. Because prior to this point, the only time we would have seen them would have been hanging out up above when, when we did the whole Blaze thing. So, so yeah. This would be their introduction. Because, like, yeah, the, that pan up shot from, like, the feed is, like, the, uh, the typical, like, character introduction shot with, like, the, the name and voice actor credit for this game. As if this guy couldn't get any weirder and creepier. Was he the one who brought the fairy tale book to the school, or? No, he was going to the. Well, if he, hmm? if he, no, because it was there before he showed up, but he was all too happy to take it with him. Yeah, like he he was going to the school specifically to look for it and Mitsuki, so. Dude, you can slice your way through a fucking Mack truck. Why can't you take the lead? Do you know how much effort that takes, though? Like, why why go through all that work of just flying around and killing shit when you can let the kids do it? 